In today's Morning Meds, we'll discuss pornography and what it brings to the life of the believer. So if you're ready, then let's go. Good morning. Good morning and welcome back to Morning Meds where we meditate on God's word in order to tackle everyday issues that we face as Christians. And if you like what you see on Morning Meds, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so we can make it through this life together with the help of God. Although it is normally taboo to speak openly about sex in the Christian faith, especially the black church, we must recognize that pornography and all its close cousins are a real issue for society and our churches. Celebrities like Tiger Woods, Terry Crews, Kanye West, and Charlie Sheen have all admitted to having a porn addiction. And if it's in the world, it could also be in the church. I don't know if you remember, but Kirk Franklin also did an interview talking about his own addiction to porn and how he started watching porn at the small, small age of eight. Now the actual term pornography is not listed in the Bible, but when we look at the characteristics of porn, like adultery, lying, lust, fornication, we can draw a conclusion that is unacceptable to God. There are two groups of things that pornography brings into the life of the believer. The first thing is division and deceit. The consumption of pornographic imagery is usually done in the dark, which means we are less likely to openly declare that we watch or have watched porn. This causes us to isolate the problem and bottle the issue up inside. This makes the perfect breeding ground for Satan, for he is the prince of darkness and the father of lies. And if we're married, have children, or both, the division and the deceit are at an all-time high because there's probably not a lot of room for open dialogue about pornography in our homes. Do not let the enemy succeed in isolating you the way a lion corners a gazelle. He is out there prowling, waiting, looking for you, your spouse, and your children to, to catch them up with sexual immorality. It is not reality, and our babies don't know that. So talk about it and talk about it soon, letting them know that sex within marriage is beautiful and anything else is uncivilized. The next thing that porn introduces into the life of the believer is discontentment and destruction in ourselves and in others. The number of ideas represented in pornography are endless. They bring something new to our minds. Watching porn is kind of like that new car smell. It's weird, but the more you smell it, the more you want to smell it. That's because the newness of every video causes us to look at our own lives kind of like, nah. This lackluster view of our spouse and our home life causes us to be less interested in fighting for our unions. In fact, when men watch porn in marriage, their divorce statistics doubled. But when women watch porn during marriage, their divorce statistics tripled. It's been said that you are what you eat. But for today, we say you are what you see. The eyes are the gateway to the mind. And this thing that people consider a little secret novelty helps feed sexual deviance everywhere. Pornography is lust exemplified. And the word of God tells us that when we look at something wanting it so badly, we are guilty of lust and or covetousness. The enemy comes but to destroy, and sexual immorality destroys our ability to hear God through his Holy Spirit. When we watch pornography and become a part of other types of sexual immorality, we become desensitized to God's conviction and leading. This stuff destroys relationships. 
yours and God's, yours and your spouse's, and yours and your precious babies. It is Satan's job to distort everything that God has created beautifully. If you are a Christian, I encourage you to renounce this behavior and repent. Seek God's word as it pertains to your life and his purpose for your life. If you feel that you have an addiction to porn, it may be helpful to seek out testimonials of others who have overcome porn addiction. It may also be helpful for you to reach out through prayer to a counselor or a therapist or a small group or people that you trust. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and we thank you for this opportunity. God, we come to you admittedly knowing that we are not all that we could be. We know that we are not perfect and we've fallen short. So we ask you, God, to forgive us for the wrong that we've done and we ask you, Lord, to allow us to free ourselves from this condemnation, from this guilt, from this icky feeling. You forgive us. You free us. And we ask you, Lord God, to allow us to not be entangled again in this yoke of bondage. Once you free us, we are free. The word says, whom the son sets free, he is free indeed. And your word also says that by your stripes, we are healed. So right now, God, we claim healing over addiction. We can't, we claim healing over the deceit and the lies of pornography. We claim healing over the destruction that is causing to our marriages and our unions. We love you, God. And we ask you, God, to cover our children. We ask you, Lord, to protect their little minds and allow us to catch these things before it goes too far so that we can allow show them that that is not your idea of love that is not your idea of a uh, clean uh, loving marital sexual interaction we ask you god to allow us give us the courage the boldness the i don't careness to speak on this and shine light and not allow the devil to keep us in the dark to isolate us anymore to to corner us god we keep keep us strengthen us allow your holy spirit to gird us up and allow your word to take root in our heart that we might not sin against heaven or sin against you in jesus name we pray amen